Prague is a beautiful city full of culture, attractions and sites and things to do. And when you're coming here for the first time, it can get really overwhelming on how to prepare. For example, if it's a freezing day like today where it's minus five. So in this video, we're gonna be telling you some tips on how you can prepare to make the most out of your visit. When planning a trip to Prague, it's important to decide how long you'll be staying. Generally, four to five days is enough to see and do most things at a leisurely pace. Some popular attractions include Old Town, Charles Bridge, Prague Castle, and the Jewish Quarter. You can also plan short excursions to nearby castles and towns, such as Pruhonice or Kutna Hora. In addition to sightseeing, you can include activities such as shopping in the markets, trying local restaurants and pubs, and experiencing the city's nightlife. If you are limited on time, you can still see the main attractions in Prague within three days. However, staying longer than a week may start to feel like it's too much time unless you are planning day trips to other destinations. Prague is a great city for walking and exploring, so be sure to allow some time to wander and discover new things. Once you determine how long you are planning to visit, this will also help you choose what is the best location to stay. If you are visiting Prague for a short period of time such as 3 days, it may be more convenient to stay in the city center but accommodation costs may be higher. If you are staying longer, you can find more affordable options by staying further from the tourist center. The cheapest times to visit to Prague are usually October to November and January to March when there are no holidays. Accommodation costs in Prague Old Town and Newtown range from 30 euros per night for a hostel bed to 110 and 180 euros per night for a four-star hotel room. A five-star hotel room in the city can cost between 200 and 300 euros per night and the prices vary depending on the time of the year and demand. Here are some tips on the best areas to stay in Prague. Right now, I'm in Malastranska and this place is really great for families. Malastrana is a stylish and tranquil neighborhood located near Prague Castle and Charles Bridge. It is a charming atmosphere and it's within walking distance of many major attractions including St. Nicholas Church, which is a well-known Baroque church with a bell tower that can be climbed for scenic views. Other attractions in the area include the John Lennon Wall and the Waldestein Garden. However, there are not many hotel options to choose from. Old Town is the heart and the soul of Prague, and it's also the busiest part of the city. It's a popular tourist area with many restaurants and bars, and prices may be higher due to the demand. The Old Town Square has markets during the holiday season, and then you're also going to find the astronomical clock and the Jewish quarter which is worth visiting. There's the Havelska Street Market, and this is a good place to find some reasonably priced souvenirs. Old Town is simply convenient and is a lively area with many hotels and apartments to choose from. The new town is located right next to the old town and it has excellent transport connections. It is home to the Wenzlaff Square, the National Museum and the vibrant Jerusalem Synagogue. There's also many shops including the large five floors Palladium shopping center with a big food court. However, one thing to be aware of is that this area around the Wenzlaff Square near the museum can be unsafe after dark. So be cautious if you are alone there at night due to the shady characters which are around. New town is also home to the Prague train station and this is a great area for groups or those who are looking for a constant busy atmosphere with lots of restaurants and food experiences. Vinoy Rad is a fun and hip district with many international and Czech restaurants and bars. It is also a very large expat community. It is 15 minutes by tram or 5 minutes by metro from the Prague city center and it has a very relaxed atmosphere. The main attractions here are the Zizkov Tower, the Church of the Heart of Our Lady and Namaste Miro. Vinorati is great for families, foodies and adventure seekers who want to go off the beaten path. So the Czech Republic has some incredible cuisine which you need to try. So now I'm going to share with you some of my favorite dishes which you cannot miss. These include beef goulash with bread dumplings, some roasted pork knuckle or pork ribs with a side of oil fried Czech sourdough bread, and then also beef tartar from the Nashe Marcel restaurant in Old Town. The beef tartar is made from raw beef which is mixed together with mustard, onions and some herbs and you can put this on a piece of toasted bread and you can smear some garlic on it. Another popular dish which is worth trying is switchkova which is basically roasted beef with bits of pork in a vegetable sauce, cream and some cranberry jam. This is my absolute favorite Czech dish. Also, don't forget to try the traditional Czech beer which is called Pilsner. This is widely considered as the best beer in Czech. For traditional Czech sweet treats, I recommend you try Cafe Mishak which is located in the new town and try their Spichka and Veterinik and then they also have some excellent coffee here. Prague is also known for its cafes and coffee culture. There is many specialty coffee shops throughout the city. So if you are a coffee lover, make sure you add that into your itinerary and check out a video which we've done on the best cafes which you love in Prague. In the Czech Republic, it is customary to tip around 10% at restaurants. 
This is not usually included in the bill and waiters may not request a tip. It is worth noting that the customer service in Czech Republic sometimes sucks and you may choose to tip or not based on your experience. So now let's talk about Czech money. What you know about Czech Republic is that we use the Czech Corona and we don't use the Euro. And most places you're gonna go, for example, restaurants or shops, they do accept cards. If you want, you can carry a bit of cash, maybe like 1,000 kron per person. That's gonna be mostly enough as long as you're paying by card. If you wanna withdraw money, just be careful to avoid cash machines like this one here. This is operated by the group which is called Euronet and you're gonna see like a big sign which says ATM and they charge crazy fees on foreign cards. So I don't recommend that you go to this kind of cash points, but find Czech banks, you can find like like Unicredit, CSOB and KB Bank for example but avoid the ones where it's written ATM. If you want to change your money from a different currency to the Czech crown so you need to find the right places which are trustworthy which are not gonna rip you off. Most places say they don't charge a commission but they have really rubbish rates so I'm gonna put in the description some of the places I recommend that you go check out if you want to change your money. If you feel that you have been ripped off by an exchange place in the Czech Republic you have the right to request a refund within three hours as long as you have a receipt. If the exchange place refuses, you can contact the Czech police for some assistance. It is important to note that some Czech banknotes have expired and may be rejected by vendors. You can identify the expired notes by the size of the silver strip. Valid notes have a thicker strip except for the 5,000 crown notes. If your notes are rejected by a vendor, you can exchange them at any Czech bank and after June 2024, you'll only be able to exchange the expired notes at the Czech National Bank which is located at the Namaste Republic stop. So another thing which you need to be careful about is if you are about to go into an exchange place or if you are on an ATM trying to withdraw money, you can get approached by some guys who want to offer you for example better rates or some discounts and they want to exchange your money on the streets. Don't do this because these guys are going to rip you off, they're going to give you fake money which has no value and you're going to completely lose out. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the Czech currency paper notes including the 500 crowns, 1000 crowns and 2000 crown notes. As you prepare for a trip to Prague, you may come across the Prague Visitor Pass. So this is a ticket which allows one-time entry to many of the Prague's popular tourist attractions. And you also get unlimited use of the public transport for a specified period of time. It is available for two days, three days, and a five day pass and it's advertised as a money saving option. So the next thing is depending on when you're visiting Prague, you need to really check the weather in that season because Prague can get extremely cold, especially in December. So for example, today it's mid-December and the temperature is reaching minus five and it's super cold. In the summer, it's also on the other side, which is super hot up to 36 degrees. It is important to pack appropriately for the winter in Prague as extreme cold can occur and potentially ruin your trip or become dangerous if you're not well prepared. From October to early November, temperatures may not be freezing, but it's a good idea to pack a woolly hat, some thermal clothing, gloves, and a thick winter coat. From December to the end of January, winter temperatures in Prague can reach as low as minus 25 degrees Celsius, especially in the night. It's likely going to snow and the cobblestones on the street may become slippery. Make sure you bring shoes with a good grip to prevent slipping. So I hope these tips make your visit to Prague a great one. Now check out our next video on the top three things to do in Prague.